But I think that's a much more effective way of potentially playing the clash. But uh, it does look as though we've uh, we've got all the players in the lobby, and uh, we are going to be jumping into border right about now. Uh, jumping straight into the ban phase. Let's see what border has in store. Yeah. So I'm I'm pretty much expecting a Glasban right off the bat, and there we go. From Nip, no surprises there at all. Bringing out another Glasban. I mean, are we surprised? Not really. We've seen Glas like like we said. It's uh, it's still 100% uh, ban rate. So. Uh, you know, teams just really don't want to go against it. Probably Ying. He's just yeah. so valuable. Ying again coming out. Which which two is it going to be out of the three? I think um, that Nip, I got to ban out the Echo here. I think this is going to be Maestro. Ooh. Okay. And then Blood Dragons are going to ban out the Mirror. Although, Blood Dragons do actually start on the defense here. The colors can sometimes be a little bit confusing, but the lobby has been set up like that. So. I'm, I'm kind of hoping they don't ban the mirror, but no, they're actually going to ban the Valk. So they banned the Valk last map as well. So this seems to be something they just don't want to play against right now, which is fair enough. But again, you're giving the mirror <laughs> to one of the best mirror players in your region. It's just really not caused all too much effect so far, though. That's true. But as I said, on coastline, you don't really have, I mean, we mentioned this when we were talking about Billy's defense, is that you don't really have that many options, and also the mirrors were just getting picked instantly, and there we go. We see the Monty coming out from WAG, but we do see Blood Dragons preparing for it with the Smoke, the Legion, and Nitros on the board coming out from Hugzord. This uh, this might not be a great pick. I really don't know why you would six pick onto a Habana here. It's Maybe to hide the officer's take? It does seem like a strange decision to change off. I mean, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be sad if they brought both hard breaches. Okay, I'll be honest with you, I quite like both hard breaches for can. for border. Um, I think bringing both the Zephyr and the Ash, there's maybe a little bit of crossover there. Um, so I think that it's you know it'd be interesting to see how they push. Like you say, maybe they're gonna try and push the offices, um, the offices side of things, and they're not gonna pay so much attention to the main wall because you know Hibana's only going to be really left with an option to open up uh, up one angle and when you've got the Monty you really want to be trying to open up as much as you can to make full use of Monty being able to push on into site. Definitely, definitely. So moving into round number one here we're going to see exactly how it's going to go down. I love the Monty here from Ninjas just because of how effective Wag has been playing Monty recently and He's just been tearing Attackers them apart. It's absurd. But, and yeah, I don't like the fact that they're still not opening up that half hole angle. I mean, they've got this one that goes onto the vent's window, but the vent's door is a little bit more important here, especially if you're dealing with the book. Dealing with Zofia, it's not that bad because Zofia will just go outside the front door and open up behind. But if Hugzor plays this small office mirror, which it looks like he is going to do so, and yeah, he has got one down. So. You really need someone watching that front door area to stop the book just going all the way in there. I think Pino's going to get with the same nade, isn't he? He's going to be going for it, but I think there's an ADS down in there. You can just see it there on the left-hand side of the locker, just past the sandwich area. Uh, I do think there is an ADS there, which is going to uh, it's going to foil his plan if he does try and throw a grenade through there. He's possibly aware of it at that point. Maybe he's just going to wait for a little bit later on in the round, gather a little bit more information. He doesn't tend to commit all too much to going inside the building. He doesn't really need to. You can disrupt half wall, and he kind of just dip in and out of main door area and you know, get rid of anything, any utility that you may need. But with no bandit, it is a real shame that Julio switched off the Hibana because that armory wall could have been opened by now, and that would have been a lot of control that would have been very easy to gain for ninjas in pajamas. Yeah, and there you go. Pino just gets all the way in. He's completely contested, and he has opened the mirror window in mini office as well. So it's just really looking quite terrible now for Black Dragons. They've lost one of their essential mirror windows. They don't really have any cover coming through here at all, and some great drone work coming out from Nip as well. Hans being able to secure what exactly the setup is like on the site. Hopefully, Pino should get away with this pretty nice nade he's been doing so far. He's going to throw out another drone just to make sure what exactly the situation is here, and if this nade is actually going to be effective or not. Oh, I like this. Good drone work from Pino here. This just goes to show how much time you've actually got in the round because Pino's really not done all too much that's taken... He's not done all too much this round, but everything that he has done has had a real lot of purpose behind it. He's been able to go in, 
get some control, open up a mirror window, do some really good drone work, make some good calls for Wag. Now Wag's not going in blind, he's got a really good idea of what he's going to be dealing with when he gets into the site. You can see there that the Maestro camp is going to be causing some problems, that's going to be on Zafia to deal with grenade there is going to come out and that's going to put a little bit of damage down onto Ion. Maybe that was enough to for, to allow Wag to push in but Wag's actually pushed back out again and he's just going to be holding through box as the smoke grenades are coming in trying to bait out all of this utility. It's a decent push from Nip but they need to do something with it now. There's not a lot of health left on the side of Black Dragons. They need to capitalize on that. Pino now is going to be getting his way onto Vent's window. All three of the defenders are just lying in wait in the middle of armory. Kamikaze, Pino both picking up kills. Io manages to get the kill onto Monty and Psycho getting onto Panico. Plenty of kills coming thick and fast. Attackers are going to win that round. Ultimately the trades fell in their favor. Very, very good push from WAG, being able to just disrupt all the members of the defending team in the site and ultimately just left them with nowhere to go. Ninja's doing very, very well there indeed. Just take quick control of the site, but just great drone work coming out overall from them. They were, I always talk about persistent droning and uh, if you're constantly on top of it and you know exactly what's going on, then you can just push into the site, you have control, You, as you said, you know, Wag wasn't going in blind there. He knew what to expect from that setup. He knew what was going on there. But this is looking fairly interesting now. We're going to move into round number two, ventilation room and workshop defense coming out from Black Dragons. Clearly already not favoring the upstairs defense. It's not a bad thing to switch Attack off straight away. I, there was nothing really that went terribly wrong for them. There was nothing really that went terribly right for them, for them up in armory. Um, so they're going to switch things up. And you know, it really is never a bad thing when they see the castle come out, which is something that I do quite like for this ventilation hold. And you can see there, Ion, he did his best. He picked up three kills in that first round uh, as, the, uh, as the maestro with the Alder, but it wasn't quite enough as, uh, as Ninjas and Pajamas did, of course, pick up that first round. So going to be quite a lot of utility being deployed upstairs by Black Dragons. We're going to have a nice mirror window in offices, looking onto triple wall and uh, the sort of the east stair, well the top of east stairs area in offices door. It's all going to be about how well Black Dragons are able to hold this upstairs area. It is going to be quite heavily about. I'm going to go move into round number two and see how it's going to go down. I do like when they hold it, when they hold the upstairs when they have a mirror, right, but they're vents. So it's not like Pino can go into vents and just start opening up mirrors from below because that's where the site is. So you get a lot more protection for mirrors that are being placed upstairs and you can make the upstairs defense much, much harder to break apart because now you don't really have the option of the book. And that's kind of why I like to see a twitch there. I'm not sure, not that sure about that grenade. I think he missed it. He hit the arch and I think he meant to get it straight into officers instead. I'm not sure what it was going for if it had got in. I mean, I don't think it would have got as far as the Jaeger maybe, but um, there's obviously a reason behind that. Yeah, it, it's going to be tricky, and I think that News in Pajamas really can't waste any time here, and I think they, they could do is starting to take more upstairs control a little bit early on, because there are three defenders playing upstairs, all with hatches ready to rotate down. This is something that we saw happen in NA quite a lot, and uh, this was where the Ying was brought, obviously Ying being banned this time, but just eye on there, just narrowly missing out on that kill. If he'd have held that angle for a second or two longer, he would have definitely been able to get that, and it's going to allow Psycho to move in and get the kill onto Panico, so a bit unfortunate circumstance there from Ion. But yeah, it's something that we saw is that the Ying was used really well to zone players out and to as a bit of crowd control. And I can't help but think Wag could do a very similar thing with like a Blitz or a Monty push upstairs, just pushing the defenders to the downstairs area and then, you know, moving on and being able to develop the attack. Because currently they're not dealing with the players or the defenders that are playing upstairs all too well. Eye on there with a beautiful headshot. What a kill on Topino over in CCTV, especially with the SMG-11. And he's not done, he's gonna be, he's hungry for more. He knows that there's somebody out there on West Balcony and he's not gonna be giving it up all too early. Four versus four, moving into the final minute of this second round. Yeah, doing very well indeed for himself. So we have round number two getting underway, just about a minute left to go on the clock. Ninjas are struggling to find their entry here, but we've still got upstairs control for Black Dragons. I don't think it's going to matter that much, but the big thing here is the smoke. GDN's got a great position, not just down below, but in a constant corner where that push is going to come through. Ion's going to rotate downstairs as well. So now you've got two smokes and you've got toxic babes on the site, as well as a nitro. There's plenty of plant denial here coming out as well from Black Dragons. 
Oh no, GDN is going to retreat and just get picked up on the flank. That's really bad. Psycho pushes all the way through. He gets the entry kill. Julio finds one of his own. And ninjas are looking so good to try and close out this round. 50 seconds left to go. And now it's all down to Hugzon. And 1v3 he finds one. He finds two. Oh my god, Hugzon. He still has a Nitro Stell, but it's not going to matter because Julio going to push right through that rotate and take him down. Easy as that. There goes Hugzon. And ninjas find their second round. Much closer round that time than the first round. Ninjas left that very, very late. Um, it didn't look like they had much plan on getting the diffuser down. It seemed like they were pretty well focused on getting the kills at that point. Um, and that, uh, for me, that definitely could have gone either way, especially with how big Hugzoid was going on that mirror in those few, uh, you know, final dying seconds. Um, it, it was definitely a round that Black Dragons could have won. They're going to go back up to Armory now, so they're really struggling to make anything work currently on border, having lost both of their defensive rounds um, leading up to this. But it's tricky. I don't really know what they can do. And you can see there Julio 6 picking off the Thermite onto the Habana yet again. Yeah, yet again, going for that sixth pick. We'll see exactly how that's going to work out for them as we are going to move through into round number three. Ninja's looking so, so good. And I think a lot of this is just coming down to gunfights. They're finding straight gunfights here. They're doing really well in their drone work. Black Dragons are just not doing very well with it at all. We've seen some great kills coming out, however, from Ion and Hugsword. Everyone else, however, has not won a single gunfight yet. Yeah, just really struggling to get things going there. Um, GDN got two assists. That'll probably be from some sort of smoke damage or something like that that they've been able to get down. But even the Legion not getting any assists, that's a little bit strange because usually the Goo Mines, you're going to be hoping to hit with a few of those. Um, I don't know, a little bit, little bit weird. He's obviously not played Legion every single round, but... Black Dragon's going to have to get something going here because they did, did it very well on the uh, on coastline, you know, well enough to win the map. So for it to come over onto border now and just to really flop into Nip's favor does seem a little bit strange. Going to be seeing this Maestro from Pugzord. I know you're not so keen on this one just because of how easy it can be to deal with. Oh my god. Pino's trying to go for this pre-fire where it's onto the top of the filing cabinet, which is sometimes where a Maestro will be this late into the round. Uh, already just trying to get up there and put his Maestro Cam down. It's a good attempt, and there's no reason not to do it, but yeah, he will not be able to find the kill just yet. Moving into the extra phase for round number three, we'll see exactly how that's going to work out here indeed. You can see lots of drones coming out all across the board. Psycho going to find himself on West Balcony. Just, uh, you know, taking his time, he's going to get into his drone, do some drone work. They're going to really want to look to take control of CCTV if they're going to look to start pushing an armory wall, which it looks like that's the way that things could be going. Nipper obviously doing fairly well for themselves at the moment, two rounds up. So they've maybe, you know, got a little bit of, uh, got a bit of wiggle room here and they could afford to try some things that may be a little bit risky. But they do the right thing. They know that this is a map that they really need to win and they're going the right way about it. Kamikaze has been holding this angle now for multiple seconds. Pino going to open things up with a nice vertical kill onto Ion and Iblack's going to take out Psycho as the Dockerby call rings through. It's going to leave Iblack's pretty exposed there in CCTV, although he has got a little bit of assistance from Legion playing over in offices and GDN are playing in Fountain Area. Julio there going to get a nice peek out onto Iblack's. That's going to remove the mirror from the equation. Four versus three now moving into the second half of the round it's all now on the three guys that have got no oh sorry hugs has actually got some kills sorry gdn and panico have been struggling for kills this far they're going to need to do something now for their team because otherwise but uh, sorry ninjas in pajamas are very well placed to take this round yeah, they're looking pretty good indeed. Oh my god, Kamikaze almost picking up the kill. Peak still coming out from Hook, so he desperately wants that kill. He wants that peak coming out. But the opening up from below is going to come from Pino here. He should be able to pick up a kill, but Hugzord hmm, is going to get away with a cross from half wall. It's a 3v4. Panico on the roam here. Let's put down some Legion Mines down to 19. That's actually going to go below to try and deal with this book. Should be able to actually get him because I don't think there was any good flank watch drones that we can watch here. But Pino with the nade he is going to come through and just take down Hugzord. And now it's all down to Panico. He's on this roam. He's not been able to do anything just yet. Pino takes down GDN. Desperately finding this kill, but Pino with the triple kill takes down Panico as well. Nip take round number three. Oh my god. Beautiful players coming out from Pino. 
Pino seems to have really woken up this uh, this map. He really struggled to get anything going at all on coastline, um, but now he seems to you know be able to do no wrong. He's getting nade kills. He's getting kills with the gun, uh, and he's really making Buck work for him now on this attack, which is great to see. Ninjas in pajamas have come out very very strong, showing on board at this far, taking the uh, the first three rounds, and it does just seem as though Black Dragons can't really get anything to you know anything to gel, anything to work at the moment. They're going to go back down to ventilation. And at this point, if you're Black Dragons, which bomb site do you start thinking about going? Because you've got them all open to you. What, do, you do you think about doing something drastically different, or are you just going to try and get your vents one to work? Definitely. Let's see how it does go through. Defenders, Indeed. As we will get into round number four, Ninjas in Pajamas finding three consecutive rounds here on the attack. They want to bring this to the Cider, and they're bringing out their strat that they brought out last time with the Finker. You weren't a fan of this. Uh, there's just there's a lot. Uh, he switched off Ash onto the Finker, so I, I, I don't really understand the the post behind that. Anyway, Sako's been doing fine um, as he is. He's, there's no real need to bring out the Finker. It isn't really going to add anything. If anything, I'd like to see Psycho on the Dockerby and Wag on the Monty maybe, uh, and just switch things up that way because we've got Iblax on the Legion and we've got the Smokes on GDM. Um, they're all going to be able to shut down this Finker push should it come. Which I'm sure it will, because there's no point in bringing it if you're not going to use the Adrenal Surge. So, I don't know, a little bit strange, but ultimately, with the way that Nip are going at the moment, it seems like they're not really putting a foot wrong in anything that they're doing, so maybe he's just really feeling it, and, you know, they've got a bit of an idea as to how they want to push this, if they're going to push it quite quickly, um, or, or not quite quickly, but when the Execute does come, I think it could be quite, you know, aggressive. It's going to be Doc Calls, it's going to be Flashes, it's going to be Lifelines, and then the attackers are going to have the Finger Boost at the same time. Yeah, the the finger boost we were talking about this is you know the LMG is so good with the adrenal surge coming through, but it is a bit of a crux. I mentioned this before that if the LMG does go down, you don't tend to find much use out of the finger, of course, and uh, and, and then the rest of your tank just falls apart because you're giving up utility to bring the finger in the first place, and if it if that goes down, you will probably lose the attack. But we'll see how exactly this is going to work out. And Psycho going to rotate all the way out onto the balcony, it looks like, onto the south side. Still holding down east stairs, though. Nip have a lot of control here, and this site, you need as much control as the defenders can get. But we're still seeing loads of roamers on the board here. This is, uh, this is still looking pretty good, though, I would argue. Although I'm I'm surprised at how Hugzord is playing so aggressively here, considering he has one of the nitros on the site itself. Hugzord's been doing some, you know, good work. He had a, he had a really good spree with Maestro a couple of rounds ago. It wasn't quite enough to get the round in the bag, but he's going to be wanting to get some kills here because I think Black Dragons are in a position now where they feel like they need to get some important frags early doors just to stem the flow of this push when it does come because at the minute, there's still 10 people left on the map. We've got a minute and 15 or so left on the clock. You can hear a goo mine there just going off in the distance. That's going to be providing some vital information. But you can see there that Pino's Adrenal Surge has disappeared straight away. But while the Adrenal Surge is live, Psycho is able to get a kill onto Panico. That's going to allow him to drop a hatch. Another kill going to come out now for Nip onto Ion. So that is going to be mute as well. So that's one of the shotguns that you're removing from that final stage. But GDN is still playing over in Armory Lockers. His phone is ringing now, so his location is going to be known. He puts the shot and he doesn't quite manage to land them. Kamikaze picks the kill in the meantime onto the Legion. GDN's phone is still going off. He's in an impossible location here. He's, he's left with one option. He's got to rotate back down the hatch, but he's desperately trying to waste as much time as he can. Kamikaze's picking up the kill all down to Hugzord. Hugzord finds his first one onto Pino, but he's got four more left to find in 30 seconds. Diffuser is in the hands of Julio, and it could be going down at this point because Hugzord has, has had to relinquish control of the site, and he's going to have to play for some sort of a retake when when it does Adapter's come, final 15 beat. seconds now, and the plan has gone down. Hugs up with the pre-fire shots coming out, narrowly misses out on that engagement, vaults over. Can he make these shots land? It looks as though the players on Nip are lining up, but Julio's gonna pick up the kill. Another round for Nip on attack, keeping the trend and keeping this flawless run that they are currently on. Yeah, doing really well for themselves so far. I mean, we've seen ninjas have pretty dominant attacks so far. Unfortunately, we're gonna have Hugzord, who will disconnect from the game. Hopefully, he can get back in here before we have to have a rehost. No. But rehost will be called from Blood Dragon, so it looks like there will be one. Yeah, there we go. We are gonna have a rehost, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, looking pretty good for Ninja so far, having taken multiple rounds of the attack flawlessly. And uh, 
wow, just complete domination from them. It's got to be tough as Black Dragons to see that large momentum shift there. We've talked about momentum plenty of times and you commented that it's a real big thing in Latin America. Um, they do tend to rely quite heavily on it. So to see Black Dragons have such a good showing on coastline and to come out with the victory on that map and then to be thrown into border and now it just seems like they cannot put a foot right no matter what they do. It's got to be a very difficult position to be in mentally and now you're gearing yourselves up for for the real long haul and it just seems like ninjas and pajamas are hitting the stride despite the fact that they've already played a best of three series before this map so the thing i will mention as well is that psycho on the first map before we had our rehost was dropping 13 kills and they still lost psycho has been one of the better fraggers throughout the series and throughout the last series as well he was doing really really well for his team and putting him on Finko, giving the Finko buff and putting him on the LMG, something that Yuna used to do a lot. I mean, he still does it a lot now in phase, but he used to do it a lot uh, back on the day. So putting your better fraggers on Finko with the Finko buff, LMG, they tend to do very, very well with it. I think Psycho's doing a lot of work with it so far. But the thing that I've been pressed so far from Nip is their constant adaptation, is that even though they're winning their rounds and they're winning them quite convincingly, they're still changing it up. They're still changing up their attack plans. They're still, you know, not bringing the same operator lineup. They're still pushing from different sides. I think that's the key is that they're really keeping things fresh despite the fact that they're consistently winning rounds. It's, it's you know, the, the, some of the guys are picking the same operators and some of the pushes are coming around in the same ways. But Black Dragons just haven't really got a response for how that's going at the moment. And they're not able to, you know, they're not able to react or deal with the ways that Nip are pushing. And it almost seems at the moment like Black Dragons just kind of sat inside, almost waiting for this to happen around them. And as soon as Nip starts sort of coming over the map like a horde, taking the control that they want and they need, and just they can just take whatever they like. You know, we've seen some closer rounds, but ultimately it's been very convincingly in the favour of Nip so far. It'll be interesting what happens at the halfway point when the sides switch. If we're seeing Border just maybe favour attackers today, we've said that it's a very balanced map. Yep. Um, but I think at the moment it's more the nipper winning as opposed to Black Dragons necessarily losing. And I don't think that that's so reflective on which side uh, they're either sats or attackers or defenders. I think nipper just really, they want to win this now and they're really not going to leave anything to chance. So I think that's interesting as well is, so Nip played Liquid uh, just before and they played Border as well. But the mirror was actually banned there. The mirror is not banned here. So I'm very interested to see what Nip do with it on their defense considering that the mirror doesn't seem to have any impact whatsoever so far. I think that's mostly coming down again to uh, the book play coming out and that does make it very very difficult to be in a good position as mirror. The thing that I did mention is when you have events defense you have the site downstairs below you you can play the mirror and you can play it very well I think those, those mirrors just weren't using very effectively. They don't even put a lot of investment upstairs it seems and they retreat very very quickly yeah, if you're going to deploy the mirrors upstairs, you're going to need to play that for as long as you possibly can to get the most utility out of it. Otherwise, if you're just going to retreat fairly early on back onto site, you may be better off taking a different operator. And this is something that we've talked about with how often mirrors been banned. It seems as though teams have got used to and almost better in some cases of dealing with, you know, defending locations without the mirror in play than when the mirror it does actually become available and it, it does almost detract from uh, from maybe what they were planning or or it's something that they weren't perhaps expecting. Um, so I'm sure that we're going to be getting into the game relatively soon. We do seem to have most of the players in the lobby. Um, so it'll be, let, let's see if, uh, let's see if Border, well, let's see if, uh, sorry, Black Dragons are able to pick up any rounds on Border. Uh, a little bit of a mouthful that we've got there in the end, but let's see if they can pick up any rounds. A little bit of a break, never does anyone any harm. It can break Ninjas in Pajamas' stride, or is it going to provide Black Dragons with uh, with a couple of rounds. They're going to be going to a slightly different bomb site this time, I think, as we are just ready to jump ourselves back into the game. Let's see what Black Dragons can do this time, and uh, let's see if that break's done them any good. All right, so it looks like uh, we are going to get back into this game just now. Everything is good and ready, and there we go. We're going to see Black Dragons defend bathroom tellers. Wag in a six pick off the fuse, surprisingly, and onto the duck beat again. Uh, no six picks are going to be coming out from Black Dragons. We haven't really seen them utilize the six pick that much. We've seen the nip six pick pretty much every single round so far. And that does definitely give you a little bit of insight into the strategy from teams Defenders and what they're thinking about here. Six pick something that really doesn't seem to see a lot of 
a lot of play. I mean, we've seen it a couple of times this evening, but I think that teams really underutilise that. I think there's maybe a little bit more to be squeezed out of the old six pick. Um, Wagner obviously choosing to switch over from the fuse onto the Twitch, um, but not before. Just hanging around on the dock for a little bit to see if that's where he fancied playing. But uh, a call has obviously come out from his team that he, uh, that he should choose the Twitch. So, you know, why not? It should uh, it should make opening uh, any mirror windows that could be played in fountain or offices could make that process just a little bit easier. Definitely, definitely. So we're going to move through into round number five. Ninja the Pajamas going flawless so far on these attacks. Black Dragons, a bit of a weird position right now. They've, they're going to attempt bathroom tells. It's the only site we haven't seen them go to yet. Um, so... Hmm. I'm really not sure about this because we said that the mirror has been a little bit underutilized here. I think this is actually a really good site to bring a mirror up above. I don't like putting that mirror soft though. I think you can put it soft maybe if you have a castle on archive store. But putting a mirror soft on fountain means that's just going to get ash charge and then just push through. Yeah, and with ash and Zephyr, it's there's a lot of potential for that to happen. I think. The way that Nip have been attacking is they've really not been allowing Black Dragons to operate at any part of the map. They really do seem to take whatever they want to take. And I, I'm not sure if all this utility deployed upstairs is just going to come to nothing if Ninjas and Pajamas manage to take over the offices area relatively quickly. You can see there that Pino's already getting himself out onto the rappel to go on the roof, maybe to look at that angle from the skylight or to throw some grenades down from the, uh, the window up on the roof. That grenade. He was thrown with a lot of purpose there. I think he purposely hit the little ridge to see if he could bounce it over to where the Maestro was playing. You can see there it landed perfectly as to where the mirror window is, but Maestro had managed to move out of his position. Is that one going to hit? No, it is unfortunately not for him, but Iblax is going to lose a large portion of his health to, uh, to those grenades. So you're almost getting what you want there. You really wanted that on coastline. You're kind of getting the same thing over on border. Yeah, well, my, my big issue with what what was happening there is that ninjas are nading him out of that spot out of Canadian and Iblax is just rotating out and there's no one playing triple to cut off his rotate so I really don't see the point of trying to nade someone out there if he can just run away but there we go Panico going to pick up the very first kill of the round Pino going to go down already the book off the board that is a very important pick coming out from Black Dragons and Black Dragons seem to be playing this a lot more differently they've been able to keep hold of, uh, of offices for quite some time now in the final minute Usually this is something that Ninjas and Pajamas would have been able to take by now and they would have been pushing on toward the site with maybe a few more kills coming out. But so far, it looks a little break. It's maybe done Black Dragons a little bit of good. We've got Panico just challenging very softly there onto the top of these stairs as uh, he doesn't really want to give away his life at this point. 45 seconds left to go, so he's going to want to try and rotate back down onto the site. Wag going to pick up one onto Iblax. Almost going to pick up another one onto Ion. In this, the diffuser has actually gone down and a smoke kill is going to come out from GDM when Panico picking up another one onto Wag. I'm not sure what this post plant plan is because I don't know where the attackers are at this stage. Ion's going to be pushing down these stairs. Kamikaze is outside. The diffuser is being watched ever so slightly by Psycho, but he's not challenging it so heavily. There's about half of the time remaining on the diffuser. The remaining defenders are upstairs. So this post plant is looking pretty good for Nip at this stage, but Psycho's getting pushed fairly heavily. Picks up a great kill, very important kill onto the bottom of East Stairs, but Panico gets the gunfight against Kamikaze, so Psycho is left with no choice, but he's got to push up now, the defuse is going down, he's going to have to jump through, he doesn't manage to get the kill, Panico covers his teammate GDN as the defuse is going down, the defuse is able to be stuck, Black Dragons are going to pick up a round, is this the shift that Black Dragons needed? Definitely, I think the rehost helped them out a little bit, just to you know gather their thoughts together, stop the momentum from taking away, we talk about momentum a little bit, uh, I don't think... Maybe North America does as well, but Europe doesn't tend to get affected too much by momentum. Latin America just takes something and just run with it. Someone takes the momentum away, and all of a sudden they just keep fighting round after round after round. They're a very passionate region. I think sometimes that can affect the outcome of the rounds. Yeah, definitely. Like you say, passionate supporters and very passionate about the game and a passion to win. Um, it, it can all come to a bit of a head. As, uh, as these teams, you know, they obviously really want this. And Black Dragons, they got themselves in such a good position after winning Coastline. It seems like such a shame that they've struggled in the first few rounds, well, the first four rounds, should I say, on, on border, but they seem to be picking things up now. We're going to be jumping straight back in. And uh, they're going to be going back upstairs to Armory. So this is, of course, somewhere that they have struggled to win as of yet. But it is their last round of defense. 
Um, and that's going to be uh, that's going to be a good thing for them because I don't think that you know the defense hasn't been so great. The best that they're going to be able to come out of it is four rounds to two, um, and that's if they do manage to pick up this round. So let's see how they uh, how they're able to react. I'm sure that they're going to do a lot better on their uh, on their attacking rounds on border. Yeah, I, uh, I think so too. We'll see how it does go down. This is kind of looking how coastline was going. But then we saw ninjas move on to the attack. They were doing a little bit better there. I mean, eventually they did drop the map, but it was still looking pretty close there for a while. So we'll see how it does go down. That's round number six getting underway now. And we'll see Black Dragons on their final defense. It's going to be an armory lock. This, uh, this hasn't been great for them so far. No, it's really not. We're seeing similar elements of the setup. Uh, Hugs are there with the same uh, the same Maestro Campino again, trying to get that uh, that kill through the wall onto uh, anyone that could be playing on top of the lockers. We're seeing a similar setup, but I don't think Ninjas in Pajamas are wasting all too much time now. For them, at this point, they can surely tell and they can surely you know feel that they're very very close now to picking up this map. And they're going to want to do everything they can to close out this last round on attack because attack has been so good for them and so good to them this far. Uh, they're really not going to want to waste any opportunity they can to get another round uh, before they have to go into defense because, you know, they're not sure how the defense is going to go for them just yet. Yeah, not just yet at all. We're going to move through into round number six. Remember, it's the final defense round coming out from Black Dragons and already they started to lose quite a lot of control. Pino moving through and drones are starting to come out. Nip's thinking a lot of control for it. And I love the Twitch being picked here. I did point it out that I think the Twitch would be a really good counter here and Wag has picked that up. So we'll see how that does work out for him. But Ion is going to be holding down to CC. I like this more aggressive play, but not when you still have a book and an easy supply room. This could be Pino who picks up his first kill. The robber instantly traded out. Iblox with a great heads up play. Not sure if that was a great rotate for him to do, considering that the main door was open. But he did it anyway, and he did get the kill. So can't doubt him for that. I think at that point, when you know that you've got a player like Pino underneath on the book, you've got to do everything that you can. Wag there, narrowly missing out on that kill. I don't think he even managed to put any shots in. Psycho's going to pick up the kill onto Iblax as he tries to rotate back up to site. So Iblax is going to pay fairly heavily for getting the kill onto Pino, but it may be a worthwhile sacrifice, although Iblax probably still had a C4 in his pocket. So things are looking pretty good for Ninjas in Pajamas at this stage as they just try and take control over the ground floor. They're going to spot someone downstairs and Wag is going to be holding that angle more than aware of his presence. It's going to be a really tough position and I hope that Kamikaze can come in there and maybe apply some pressure and he does. They're getting the kill on Panico. That's Ninjas in Pajamas teamwork right there. They're playing so well. They're just not really leaving Black Dragons with any option on these on these defensive rounds. They're just making really good pushes. Smoke grenades are going to start coming out now from GDN as he just tries to stem the flow of the attackers. What a kill there from Hugs Lord. Straight onto Kamikaze, straight onto the Repel. You really can't argue with that kind of a peak. We're going to see another smoke grenade coming out now and Hugs Lord is just going to back off ever so slightly as he is aware that there is somebody else playing outside on the balcony. I'm sure that his maestro camera has probably been destroyed at this point. The push has now come in from Ninjas in Pajamas and the plant will certainly be going down very soon. Julio picking up the kill on Hugs Lord all now down to GDN. If he can get that first kill and get the shotgun out he might be in a good position to take this. He finishes the kill and he should have gone for Psycho. Psycho getting the kill onto GDN. You can't argue with the play there from Nip, but I really think that that was winnable from GDN then if he just goes for the other man instead of confirming the first kill. It was so close. So, so, so close. So close coming out from him, but uh, what a disaster first half for Black Dragons there. They will be down 5-1 to Ninjas in Pajamas, looking to try and close out this map quickly and move us on to Clubhouse, which will be our decider if Ninjas do take this. But as we said, there's a great opportunity for Black Dragons now to try and bring this back into their favor. And potentially take us uh, into a complete reverse sweep coming out from Black Dragons because they've been doing very, very well on attack so far. They haven't done so well on defense though, and that's definitely shown here on border. This is Ninjas in Pajamas' map pick. They're clearly very, very comfortable on this. Like you say, very comfortable attacking. And, you know, usually there's a little bit more pre preparation you can do for defense as well because as an attacker, you've largely got to play into how the site has been set up by the defenders. Um, and there's not all too much that you can do for that. But as uh, as a defender, there's a lot of things that you can do in terms of setup. I can see the scoreboard there is uh, looking a bit sparse on kills, but we have had a couple of rehosts, so, uh, so that is the reason for that. 
but nice setup coming out here. I think that there's a lot of reinforcements being, being deployed. They've got the whole of triple wall, and it looks as though NIP are going to look to hold offices along with archives and armory as well. So not too much of a bad idea, really, because it's going to force a lot of utility out on the side of Black Dragons if they do want to take through offices. Um, they're going to have to use thermite charges, and it's not going to leave them with all too many options when the, uh, when the push does eventually come. They're certainly not going to be able to open up armory wall and offices with only a thermite at their disposal. Definitely, definitely going through very well. Round number seven going underway. We'll see exactly how that is going to start to go Deploying. down. Black Dragons move on to the attack, and they're going to be bringing the Montaigne with them. What do you think of the Monty? We talked a little bit about Monty from Nip. We haven't really seen it from Blood Dragons yet. I quite like well, it. I mean, look at what he's able to do here. He's early on in the round, 30 seconds. He's in break room. He's got a drone ahead of him. He's going to be pretty much aware that there's someone playing in CCTV, already forcing this guy in CC to move. Brooks playing underneath, who's going to be able to start opening some hatches. All of a sudden, Wag's been pushed out into armory. CCTV control has been gained with a Monty. It took 45 seconds, if that. There's a book now playing underneath that's going to be able to go forward and operate further and try and get some bandits off the wall, maybe even get the mirror open. I love it. It's a great play. Yeah, the Monty's a great play here, definitely. And there's no lesion coming out from ninjas, as you said. So, it's going to be hard for ninjas to really deal with this Black Dragon's Monty, but it's kind of about how Panico plays it as well individually as a player, because the Wag, as he's known, uh, when he was playing on Monty, he was abusing it really, really well, and I'm sure Twitch chat was really wasn't the way, he wasn't very happy about the way he was playing it, just because it's so hard to deal with, where he earns shields and just goes for the hip fire, and then he re-shields again before he can do anything about it. Panico is playing it much more passively though, and he's just sitting here, He's the mountain, you can't get past him, and that wall's going to get opened up easily as that. I think he even managed to bait out a C4 as well there from Julio on the mirror, so, you know, you, you, it's, it's a great play there from the Monty. They managed to open up the wall, they've taken up a heck of a lot of control. Iblax is now going to be left to operate on the book at the, uh, the bottom of ventilation window there. He's going to be able to push out anybody that's on half wall. There's still an evil eye, which is going to cause a little bit of a problem, and Sophia is probably going to be the one that's going to have to deal with that as uh, there we go. It just gets destroyed right on cue. Kamikaze getting ready to peek out onto the Monty, but there's not a lot he can do. GDN there ready to get that kill, and uh, he picks it up with relative ease. Smoke grenades are going to start coming out now, and this is when Book really needs to start pressuring the player that's playing the mirror in the small office or in the box, as, uh, as it's just going to be a, a bit too free for, uh, for Smoke to be able to sit there and play. Psycho's going to pick up that kill onto the book, so Book is not going to be able to do that. Another Toxic Bay has come out. Panico is able to sort of give good pings and give a little bit of harassment and move the defenders around, but he's not able to do all too much more. Two quick kills coming out there from Nip, and another one coming out for Hugzord. The diffuser has certainly got to start going down now. Two versus two with about 20 seconds left on the time. Monty now just really wants to look to protect this Jackal as the diffuser goes down, but he's going to be left with a very, very tough job here because Psycho is going to peek him out. He gets some really good shots down onto him, but doesn't able to convert. The diffuser has gone down. Psycho does get the C4 kill. It's all down to the Monty. It's not going to be enough. Those close quarters and being shield hit is going to be enough for Psycho to pick up that kill. Another round, moving Nip onto match point. Great round from Nip and great ability to just deal with how passively that Monty was playing. Uh, I don't know. I just I would have liked to see the Monty be a little bit more aggressive there. He did a great job initially, getting everything open and baiting out the nitrous, as you said, and uh, just doing really, really well with that. So I would have loved to see them being a little bit more aggressive there, but I don't know. I feel like he could have played that a little bit better towards the end, especially once the plant has gone down. The Monty needs to get more aggressive before he decided to unshield. Yeah, it was just a case of, you know, Monty found himself in sight, but he didn't really have the support network around him to be able to operate or do anything whilst there. He was able to provide good pings, but because there was multiple defenders, if he'd have unshielded, he would have just got shot straight away. And there was no one on the Black Dragons lineup that was really coming in and pushing up behind him to try and use that shield as a bit of cover and they didn't really have all too much utility left. Defenders They'd have had four smokes bomb. available with those last two operators that were alive, the Monty and the Jackal. Um, I don't know if we did see four smokes going out. I'm not sure how much it would have helped them, but it could have done a little bit to help them get the plant down. I mean, the plant went down anyway, but it was just left to Monty. Hindsight, maybe Monty could have planted and then allowed uh, Hugzord on the Jackal to uh, try and fend off the defenders. 
yeah, definitely really well played indeed. We'll see how it's going to work out for them as well. As we're going to go into a customs and supply room defense coming out from Ninjas in Pajamas in what could be the final round here on the border. That could take us to our decider of Clubhouse, which uh, which also, coincidentally, was our second map in Black Dragons uh, in Nip versus Slip. Yeah, Clubhouse is a map we've seen a couple of times now. Um, already got a little bit of an idea of how Nip are going to play that. You know, they played it very well against, um, sorry, against Liquid earlier on. But it wasn't quite enough for him. Liquid did it come away with that victory. So I think Nip are very focused now. They're on match point. They're not really going to want to leave anything to chance. It'd be a huge mountain for Black Dragons to climb to come back now and to, you know, be hitting sort of, well, six rounds on the bounce, if you will, to bring it, well, Five rounds on the bounce to bring it to the OT and then another couple of rounds to close it out eventually. Um, that's a huge task, and especially with the form that Nipper on currently. Definitely. So, Ninja's looking pretty good, and I love them doing this setup. Whoa! Oh, what? Pino! He just gets a massive wall bang all the way onto Ion. What was that? I've, I'm not sure. It was, it was just a perfect pre fire. I'm not sure if he's just firing on a common spot that he knows there. If it's yeah, like it's after the, the vault into office, yeah. yeah, it's, it's after the vault into office. But even still, you know, you, you play the game, you know where that spot is on the map, but you don't know where it is to shoot it like that and pick the headshot up perfectly. It's incredible game sense. That was insane. Yeah, but Hugzod is going to pick up one in to return. There goes Julio, the mirror already off the board, and Nitro's going down with it as well. This isn't looking too good for Black Dragons because they've already lost the Zofia and that was really their main way of getting rid of Maestro Cams and I mean they have the Sledge and they have the Book as well, they, they can put nades out but how effective really is that? You've just got to get too close to effectively use Sledge's Hammer um, and then the grenades are just so hit and miss you've got to cook them to, to perfection uh, but Panico is going to pick up the kill onto Kamikaze so it's not looking too bad for Black Dragons at the minute Ninjas in Pajamas are at a man deficit which is going to be a tough thing for them to deal with they've still got very good upstairs control but it's almost as if Black Dragons aren't really too bothered about that because they've already got the customs wall into Passport open and they may be looking at getting a plan down sometime soon under the cover of some Dockery smokes yeah definitely so we are going to go through, it's going to be match point. Still, Psycho runs all the way down Metal Stairs. He picks up Panico for free, and that's the sledge is gone. Smoke's not going to go down, but they just run all the way into the site. Oh my god, no lag. It's not going to let him happen. As Iblux takes down Psycho, now it's a 2v3. Nip really had to start to return onto the site to see what they can do here to try and recover the round. Wag drops, drops down into the small office there and pushes all the way around, but his phone is still going off as Pino will pinch out GDN. Now it's a 2v2. They've managed to even the scoreboard. Ow! Oh, what a shot from Wag! And now it's all down to Iblax in a 1v2. He's got to find these picks. He's got to push, but he can't. Wag takes him down, and that will be Nip who take round number eight, and they will bring us to our decider of Clubhouse. Very convincing win there from Nip, managing to close that out in only eight rounds. Um, not something that uh, I was expecting to see, I think. Judging from Black Dragon's form on the previous map of Coastline, I was expecting to see them pick up a couple more rounds there. And it's um, it's a little bit, you know, not disappointing, but it's a little bit, um, you know, there's a bit, a bit of a question there as to what's gone on, um, you know, what's actually changed within the, within the short space of that time. Um, something I want to just touch on before I forget.